Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Montessori Family Alliance webcast. This is Lorna McGrath, your host, and with me today I have Carrie Conti, PhD, who is a, a specialist in um, prenatal, natal, and early childhood um, education. Well, education, yes, and mm -hmm. she's going to be with us talking about uh, the growing brain. But before we get started, I just want to welcome those of you that are joining us for the first time. Boy, we would love to hear from you. So there's a box on the right-hand side of your screen, screen where you can write questions or comments, and we'll answer them as we go. There's also a handout on that same side of the screen. There's a section called Handouts, and um, Carrie has provided that for us. You can either watch that now, or you can, you can look at it now, or you can print it out and use it as a reference for later on when you're thinking back to what, what Carrie has had to say today. For those of you who join us regularly, thanks for coming back, and feel free to write down your questions and comments as well. You know that as members of the Montessori Family Alliance, you'll have access to the recorded version of today's webcast on the Alliance web page in the Resource Center. It does take about a week for us to get that up and running, uh, so uh, be patient and take a look at it later if you want to remind yourself of what's going on. So, again, with me today is Carrie Conti, PhD. Carrie, thanks for joining us again. You've been with us before. I'm excited about today's topic, uh, and I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Welcome. Well, thank you. It's such an honor to be back. I really love the Montessori community, and I'm so thrilled to share this information that's really, truly, like, some of my heart's passion. I love it so much. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump in. Is that work, Lorna? That sounds great. I'm ready. All right. All right, here we go. Let me okay. get my screen. Okay, so I've titled this talk, Understanding Your Child's Brain for Connection and Cooperation. I'm Carrie Conti, and as Lorna said, my background is in a field um, called prenatal and perinatal psychology. So for the past 20 years, I've been studying this absolutely amazing field, and um, what I've done is I've taken all this research from the field of attachment theory and pre and perinatal psychology and, and neuroscience and really created a very, very, very simple way for parents to think about and understand their child's developing brain. And um, I'm so glad about that because, you know, as I was looking through things ahead of time, I said to myself, oh, I wished I'd known this a few years ago. <laughs> so, yeah, we're excited. Yeah, I really have to say that of all the things that I do share with parents, this is, is the thing that people walk away going, that was amazing. That's, you know, and, you can, and what, what's so fun is that what I share, you're going to be able to take with you right away and put to practice. So it's very practical. And that's, you know, there's, you could spend your whole life studying the brain. This is a very quick and dirty and will get you a lot as a parent. So that's where we're heading today. Terrific. All right, well, let me just start with our kind of an overview of our current understanding of human development. So we are in the midst of a very big shift. Let me, let me see where we are. Yeah, so we're moving from an old paradigm, an old worldview, to a very new paradigm. So very briefly, the old paradigm was um, basically that we arrive as blank slates, that you have a child, you have a baby, and there's not really anybody home. They're not really a full person until they can do all the things that the adult people do or even the older children people do. Um, and that really informed parenting. It made parents really think that they had to make the child who they are and that they had to, you know, discipline the behaviors and manage the emotions. And it, it, it wasn't founded on any really, you know, scientific evidence. It was really just common wisdom. And so, what I love is that we're moving beyond it, and we're really doing that right now. I tell parents, you're kind of on the bridge from the old paradigm to the new paradigm. And so what the new paradigm is, is this understanding that you don't actually get a baby. You, you, you have a whole person, and I call them the big being in the little body, <laughs> that there is somebody home, and they are already their unique, very brilliant, very wise selves, but they happen to arrive in a very immature package. And that, that immaturity and that almost primal state that they arrive in is really due mostly to the fact that their, their neural networks, their brain wiring hasn't taken place. And so 
from this new perspective, what you realize is that they aren't blank slates, but they aren't wired to do all the things that we do in our culture or, you know, in, in the culture that they're going to grow in. And so, yeah, I mean, that's a big awareness. It's, it's really yeah, huge. It's so yeah. great because Montessori said that back in the early 1900s, but in a, a slightly different way because she didn't have any brain development exactly. research at that time. And so she talked about it more as a spiritual kind of a thing. Yeah. But she definitely was of the opinion that we are not, uh, that, the, that the child is this empty, this empty uh, container mm -hmm. that we pour information into and behavior into and discipline into and all of those things. She said, you know, the child is already there yeah. and we just need to provide the environment, the right kind of environment. Yeah. Yes, for that yes. child. So yes, go ahead. I know. Sorry. She's, she's one of my idols, so I could talk all day about this. I have the chills just thinking about it. I mean, I'm standing on her shoulders and many others, and I love that I get to do it. So um, with regards to that, what I like to say is, so the new paradigm, your role is to guide, that your role is to model and to, what I say, speak not just the verbal languages that you would like their brains to wire with, but the emotional languages and the social languages and the artistic languages and the creative languages and all of the ways that you would hope they would understand this world, this community, this culture that they're in, you get to create the environment that really allows for that wiring to get to get taken to take place. So ah, I love that you are just excited about this as I am. So Beautifully is, uh, said. Beautifully said. <laughs> Good. All right. So, like I said, we've got the big being, which again, I, 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 it's the conscious, the spiritual being, the isness that, you know, as much as we're powerful humans, we aren't as powerful enough to make a human being. <laughs> and so oh, there's right. something bigger at play in the human development. And so what's beautiful is that this body and brain gets created in the womb. But it doesn't get wired. The brain doesn't get wired until they come out. And that's for survival. They need to know what to wire for. You can't, you wouldn't survive if you wired all sorts of things in the womb that weren't going to serve you later on. So mm -hmm. the human baby really gets big enough in terms of being able to survive on the outside, but they're quite immature compared to other mammals in the sense that they can't survive on their own. They need an other. So it, you know, there's an extern, there's the, uh, the nine months of internal gestation that allows for them to be cooked enough to come out, and then there's another nine months of external gestation, and then another 25 years of young life that really prepares you to be independent. But that's a long process. So yeah. this big being, all there, who they are, amazing, unique, wise, comes in this little body, and one of the hallmarks of the little body is the fact that they don't come pre-wired, that their brain doesn't come with the ability to do all the amazing things that they're going to be able to do. And it's really in connection with caregivers that the wiring takes place. So it's, it's the physical environment that they're in, which you know very well, and it's the emotional and the verbal and the social environment that they're in that's sending signals through the nervous system, through the senses, into the nervous system that's just wiring, 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 and allowing for all the parts to work together. Absolutely. So there's basically three, three main parts that we need to be concerned about. Again, there's so much more to this, but for parenting purposes and educator purposes, this is plenty. It, it'll, it'll, it's a life changer. It's enough. So when the little person comes out of the womb, and what I want to say is I am going to get to I know not everybody here has an, a newborn right now. So I mean, this, this information just lays the foundation that's going to in, impact you whether you have a two-year-old, a nine-year-old, a 10-year-old, a 20-year-old, a 30-year-old, a 45-year-old, a 90-year-old. All of it <laughs> applies. So I'm going to okay. kind of lay out the development, and then we're going to talk practicals. So when this tiny person comes out of the womb, they have all the brain structures they will ever need if they're healthy. And they also have all the neurons they're ever going to need. So gestation is really just an, an astounding proliferation of nerve cells that are poised and ready for them to receive the messages of the environment. So when they're born, they only have about 20% of the wiring complete. And it's back in this brain stem. If you can see this, this on the screen, um, we, call it, we call it the reptile brain. 
and it's the part of the brain that's the most primitive. And it's only concerned with safety and survival. So when that little one arrives out of the womb, they're not talking a language. They're not even really connecting on a, on a deeper level. They're really just in the environment, surveying the environment with their senses. And if they feel safe, they're pretty calm and quiet and relaxed. But if they feel threatened in any way, and that could be just because everything's so new, their alarm goes off and their fight or flight response kicks in. And that's that reactive alarm system that's really there to keep them alive. It's saying, I'm too immature to deal with life on the outside. I need somebody to know that I'm in distress. Please help calm my brain down. So yeah. for those first six weeks, that's all they've got. They don't have all the other parts yet. But at about <laughs> six weeks, another shift happens, and it's almost to the day where this middle brain starts to wire. They've got another system on, online, and we call this the limbic system or the mammal brain. And that part of the brain is not just about survival. That part of the brain is about connection and emotional communication. So, you know, they're not the reptiles who crack out of the eggs and are just looking to get food and procreate and they'll take their little brother out if they feel threatened. <laughs> they're more communal. They are starting to connect. So at six weeks, what you get is that social smiling. All of a sudden you look down at this little one who's maybe had a really rough week of not sleeping or eating more or eating less. And all of a sudden the development that was taking place pops on and you've got this person who looks you at, in the eye a little longer and coos and then you coo back and they look at you and then you go ooh and they go ah oh, and you go hi and they go ooh and then you're both in this magical euphoric state and then they look away because that's a lot of that's a lot going on in there. It takes a while to build the tolerance. So for those first, you know, year of life, that's really the brain. Those are the two brains that you're really communicating with the most. Certainly you're speaking language to them, but they're really operating from a lower brain state. It's not at all less. It's actually probably more than our human brain, but it's, it's, they're much more concerned with survival and connection. And then at about 9, 10, 11, 12 months, that neocortex, the human brain, kicks on. And that's where the Montessori environment really starts to get exciting because all of a sudden they've got that sense of, ooh, I'm safe in this world. I've been out here a year. I kind of get that I'm okay. I've got these people who are helping me and tuning into me when I'm just distressed and are helping soothe and calm me with their nonverbal communications when I express a stressed state. Great, now I'm going to get on with the work of exploring and wiring language and rational thought and my creativity. I'm going to get so wired that I'm going to express who I really am and they're going to be astounded by me. And that's <laughs> the part of the brain that's so much fun to watch develop. And so you really want to think about them as not just a person who has one brain, but a person who has three brains. And all the different brains are trying to work together, but it takes somewhere between you know, 21 and 25 years for it all to come be, to come together. Okay, let me wait on that slide. So, Lorna, before I go on, I just want to pause and see sure. anything you want clarification on, or is anything not hitting? Well, this is this is great for me. I don't know about the rest of the people that are here, but I just had a my very first grandbaby was born a week ago. Oh, wow. So I'm like on the edge of my seat wow. going. <laughs> um, not that I've never studied brain development, but I think, um, you know, when it's really makes sense to the person that's listening because they're going through some kind of thing like that, it really is exciting. And, and I can't wait to get to the communication part that you're going to be talking about yes. today. Yeah, there's so much more. It's so exciting. So, yeah. So, <laughs> Let me just overview again. So we've got the three parts. We've got that reptilian brain that's all about survival. It is the alarm system. It's never not on. It's always running the show, whether you're nine months or 90, 90 years. Um, and it is surveying through the nervous system, the environment, to know safe or not safe. And when it's safe, it's calm and relaxed. And when it's not safe, it, it reacts. And it goes into a fight or flight experience. Then you've got the limbic system, which is our mammal brain, what we share with the mammals. Think about the mammals. They're not using words, but they do use emotional communication. And when a little mammal is distressed and they run over to mama mammal, she's calming them with her words and her action, not her words, with her sounds and her physical body 
and um, her presence. And then that neocortex is what's unique to our, us humans, and that's when we're playful and creative and we're telling stories and we're all communicating and we have mind sight and we're empathetic. So you have these three parts of your brain, they have these three parts of your, their brain, and the little people are in a constant process of wiring these different parts and then wiring them together. So what I really love sharing with people is from the old paradigm perspective, we often saw behavior as misbehavior. But from this new paradigm perspective and our new understanding of the brain, we recognize that this is stress behavior. That when somebody's acting in what I call unsavory ways, it's because they've slipped in their brain. Dan Siegel, who I learned a lot of this from, he talks about flipping your lid. That it would be wonderful if we could all stay nice and human and rational and have the ability to really understand each other and communicate with, with words all the time. But what you have to understand is that we don't have that capacity and the smaller humans have less of it. And right. the truth is, the paradox is, in order to get that human brain wired, you're constantly vulnerable to slipping because in order to build the brain, you have to tolerate new stimulation. And as you're tolerating new stimulation, you're stressing the system. And as you stress the situation, the si as you stress the, 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 the mechanism, you start slipping. So. Okay. This is really important for parents to hear because what it really helps you understand is that each of the brain states will look very different and re requires very different parenting. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. So here's the deal. When somebody's in their human brain state, they're very cooperative, they're relaxed, they can communicate, it's easy, they're fun, they're talkative, they're creative, they're thinking, they're reasoning, they're loving. And I like to tell people, it's when you think, you look at that little person and you go, you know, and you look at your partner and you go, I think we have a genius. Like, this kid's great, <laughs> right? Like, this is not a three-year-old, this is like a seven-year-old. And it's right. when, yeah, and you're thinking like, okay, good, we're all ready to go, let's go, we're human, let's do this. <laughs> and, you know, so yes, let's do this. When your person is in that brain state, you want to teach. You want to give them those lessons. You want to express what you value. You want to ask questions. You want to share what you love about life. You want to appreciate them. You want to tell them the things that you want more of. I appreciate it so much when you get your shoes on and I don't have to ask more than once. Yahoo! You want to be <laughs> playful. You want to be listening. You want to celebrate with them. This is the part of the brain that gets the message in the deepest, most human way. So that's the part of the brain that you really want to take advantage of when they're in there. And you want to do a lot of that, you know, hey, this is what we love. This is what we love about you. This is what we works for us. And so it's a very, um, it's, an, it's a brain where you want to be very proactive and you want to be, you want to be very human with them. Now, the mammal brain, so we're in the second, that's an interesting brain because that is not the mammal brain. That's not the human brain that's rational and it's not the freaking out reptile. I'm so out of sorts I can't do anything but lose it brain. It's a different brain. It's the crispy, cranky, clingy, emotional, whining, not listening, resisting, ordering, speeding up, nervous laughing, that playing baby, the mewing. It's the part of the brain that is letting you know I'm wobbly. I'm not human and I'm not reptile yet, but I do need something to help myself get steady. So sure. what does that brain need? First, it needs the adult person to slow down. What we often do is we start seeing some of that behavior and we get faster and we want to talk at them and we want to get them to stop and get them moving on, but that's yeah. actually not helpful. So you want to slow down. Know. Yeah, it's great to know. It's good to be reminded of. Yeah. You want to slow yourself down you want to reflect what you're hearing emotionally. I see you're frustrated. I'm hearing you feel mad. And you want to do it both with your words and keep the words to a minimum, but more so with your tone. And you want to, that's empathy. That's empathizing. I get it. I'm with you. It's yeah. really just whatever you need to do to say I'm with you, I hear you. And then you want to zip it. It's not a talking brain. That brain does not understand words and what words do at that point is overload it and push them further down into their reptile brain. Mm -hmm. So the things that bring us back and help us feel safe. So that brain is telling us, 
I'm out of sorts. I'm not losing it yet, but I'm about to slip. I need help. I need your nonverbal, non-anxious, mirroring presence. So those things are eye to eye, skin to skin, heart to heart. And it's sometimes when you need to say, hey, you're having a hard time, and I want you to know that I'm sort of having a hard time too. You can be authentic in that place. They know it. That brain tunes into your nervous system probably better than you do because it's survival. So being transparent and saying, you're so melty, right? You're having such a hard time. You're crispy. You're cranky. I'm with you. And you might be feeling that I'm a little out of sorts too. Let's shake. Let's wiggle. Let's look at each other in the eye and wiggle, 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 wiggle. Big hug. I'm with you. I get it. Not always easy. And what I tell people is go for one out of 40 or 50 times of trying these things. This is not, oh, I learned something new. I better do it right. You're not going to. Most of us didn't get this growing up. So what I really encourage people to do is have a lot of patience and compassion. And before you do anything else, just start trying to look through this lens of these three brains. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, and I think in this day and time, we are even more apt to uh, be very, very fast and, yeah. and, and have a harder time slowing down than maybe we did years ago when there wasn't as much um, going on. It was more rural type environment. Um, and nowadays, you know, everything is happening so fast because of technology and because of our lifestyle. And so I think this is a really, really important one. Yeah. I mean, really, the, the, if you want to just keep it so simple, you know, a motto is slow down, connect, enjoy. So if you do want to get a small human moving, you want to mm -hmm. practice those three things before you say a word. So, you know, this brain, you can connect with play. You can be playful and redirect and get them moving. But you, so you want to be mindful of keep the words to a minimum when you sense somebody's in this brain. It's not time to say, hey, baby, get your shoes on. And they say, no, I don't want to. It's not time to go, but here's why. And, do, 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 and it's really important. Blah, 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 blah. You yeah. want to go, ooh, okay, this person is not fully connected to their human brain. Less words more connection, a little bit of play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good it advice. It's not always easy, but I'm here to remind people over and over and over <laughs> again. I have people that spend like years, I've had people that are with me for 10 years, and they're just like, whatever you're doing, I'm doing it because I want your support. So hey, I'm out here. <laughs> okay, so now let's move on to this reptile brain state. So right. when somebody is in this brain state, whether it's your week old grandchild or a teen person or even a 45 year old like myself, <laughs> when we're so overdone that we're kicking, biting, screaming, you know, that's the flight. I mean, that's the fight responses. For sure. me, it might be lashing out and getting angry. And we also have fight, flight responses, which is the running away. Um, yeah. You know, some kids are spitters. Some people shut down. Sometimes it's when they say, I hate you, and they slam their door. It's <laughs> that real outward frustration and down city. Sure. So, this is the big question. This is the million dollar question. What do I do when my child is in that state? And the truth is there's not actually all that much that you can do for them. It's mm -hmm. actually a lot more about what you do for yourself. So the first thing, yet again, is get slow and get low. So, you know, that means go below their eye contact and don't even push for eye contact because they might be in such a state that that's not actually helpful for them, that they're so overdone that they can't make eye contact. But what does help the nervous system feel safe again is when somebody is communicating, I'm with you and I'm not a threat to you. So right. slow it way down, bring yourself to a calmer state, try to work on you first, get below them if you're safe, don't do it if they're hitting you, um, but try to be present so they can discharge the meltdown so that they can release because at that point it's basically a little human going off a brain waterfall that they're already at the edge of the waterfall and if you try to pull the boat back by saying calm down you need to pull it together you're just going to go over with them what they right. need at that moment is just to have the meltdown so that they can discharge it from their system and get back online into that mammal and then human brain yeah this is so important for teachers too because sometimes in the classroom 
especially you know in, in with young children three to six year olds or younger um, you know they do have times when they go back into that reptilian brain and and often teachers um, don't know that, yeah. that the way to help is to exactly. just get quiet and get calm oh, no. yeah and I worked I was an assistant to um, a, a, um, a, the earliest community the infant community years ago and the woman is a master, the teacher, Margarita, and you know, she taught me all of this. She lives all of this without even knowing the brain stuff. And then when I learned it, it was like, oh, that's what she's doing. I mean, she would just get below them. She'd sit on a little chair, get below them, and just be there. And when she sensed they were ready for connection, she was really able to offer stuff that was helpful. I mean, it's masterful. And I know a lot of the teachers out there are doing it, and I do know everybody needs the reminders. Sure. So this is on your handout. It's just a nice cheat sheet with the brain on top and then just reminders of all the things that you do. And, you know, so when the person is in that, um, the, the human brain, I like to say it's, it's green, go. Talk, play, inform, guide, give the lessons. When somebody's in that mammal, more of the mammalian brain state, you want to slow yourself down. You want to connect, reflect, zip, and play. And then that's a slow. So green is go, yellow is slow, and then red is stop. Just calm, connect, and try to comfort. And those mean you first and then the child. Nice analogy. I like it. Yeah, I know. It's so simple, right? Yeah. Okay, so let me check our time. Next is um, what I love is, again, giving people the opportunity and the reminder that you are just experimenting. What I really want to convey, convey to people is that you probably got wired. I mean, we're moving into a new era, but most people having children now we're wired with the old paradigm beliefs. So there's a few lucky people out there whose parents knew this stuff, but most people didn't. So you want to be aware that you have these three brain states too, and that's a whole other talk that I want to come on and give to, give to you guys some, at some point, because you understanding your own brain states and how you work is really critical to you helping them. So right now, all I'm going to ask you to do is put on your research glasses. I'm handing you all a nice pair of glasses, and I'm going to ask you to look at what is my child, how do my little people behave when they're human mammalian, and when they're reptilian? And then what do I, how do I look when I'm human, mammalian, and reptilian? And then I want you just to very gently experiment and play with some of these ideas. Oh, you're human? Let's talk about some stuff. Let's talk about hitting your sibling and why you want to be gentle and why we're a family. I tell them sibling propaganda. Propagandize the things you want more of when they're in that fun, playful human brain state. Pull out the animals. Oh, I love you, sibling. Oh, I love you too, sibling. We're the best siblings ever. Play those things when they're human. When they're mammalian, slow it down and try to just zip it. And that's hard. And you won't always do it. But if you can do it once in a while and you can see that what you think is about to happen, which is a giant meltdown, probably doesn't happen, you're going to have some more faith in the practice. And then when they're reptilian, really put your hand on your heart and pat yourself and say, this is hard, and I, I, that lady, that crazy lady said I should not do anything. It's really hard for me not to because I was, sure, 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 you're fine, you're fine, but I really want to play with this idea and see what happens if I let my child have the feelings and see where that goes. So that's all I'm asking. I'm not inviting anybody to take this as truth. I need you to go now play with it so you can figure out if this, like, what works for you and your family because everybody is unique. Nice. Yeah, so I will wrap, and then if you have the questions, I just want to say that I'm out here. I'm here for you, and if you want, if you have questions beyond this talk, please reach out. Hello at kerryconti.com. That's my website, kerryconti.com. And I have all, so this is the tippiest tip of the iceberg. I've got tons more for people. And what I love is that I feel like my information really does phenomenally support Montessori families. It's a very, um, you know, uh, hand-in-glove relationship. Nice. Very nice. Thank you so much, Carrie. This has been so helpful for me and I'm sure for others that are here with us today and hopefully some people will sign on uh, when the recording is up on the Montessori Foundation website. Thanks, Carrie. Beautiful. Thank you, Lorna. I really appreciate it. I hope I see you guys again. I'm sure, you, I'm sure we will. <laughs> Good. I appreciate it. Everybody, I want to just uh, remind you that for the next two weeks, July 5th and July 12th, we will not have live broadcasts. We are going to uh, enjoy a little time off. 
you can always go to the website and uh, listen to recordings that we've done in the past if you want to phone up on those. Uh, we'll meet you again then on July 19th, I believe. So please uh, stay tuned and have a great couple of weeks. Thanks for joining us today.